Hi, I'm Lobo and through these Anatomy 101 discussions, I'm going to utilize my body and different bones of my body to explain anatomy for you. So let's begin. Hello guys with uh, Lobo body another time and we are going to talk about humerus anatomy in this video. So this is the particular bone you can see this is our body. This is the profile of the body. This is the thorax, uh, the thoracic cavity and obviously we have talked about all the other bones out there but this is the bone that we are going to talk today. This is the humerus bone, the long bone of our upper arm. If you talk about this is the complete arm structure then this is the upper arm and this is the lower arm. The upper arm with this single solid uh, single bone out there that is humerus and the lower arm is with radius and ulna we'll talk about humerus today okay so in very simple words what are the parts that the humerus have three separate parts uh, that the humerus normally is with one is uh, the proximal epiphysis uh, this is the very first one the proximal epiphysis is the proximal part of the humerus which is connected to the scapula or shoulder joint near the shoulder that is proximal epiphysis then the shaft this portion from this region to this region is the shaft area and at the end we have the last one that is distal epiphysis this area is known as the distal epiphysis proximal epiphysis the shaft and the distal epiphysis these three sections are present now let's talk about the first one that is a proximal epiphysis or proximal end in the proximal end we have three structures we have head uh, first of all is the head the second one is the anatomical neck and the third one is surgical neck now wh why these things are different if you see this is the head this is the head obviously from the top view you can clearly see this is head h for head and obviously apart from this head we have two separate neck structures uh, that we generally talk about anatomical neck and surgical neck this is the anatomical neck generally we talk about and this is the surgical neck that we talk about the reason we have separate names because the anatomical neck and surgical neck are different is anatomical neck is slightly uh, narrowed region below the head so this is head so obviously slightly narrowed region below the head is anatomical neck but this is the neck which is uh, the common site for fractures we call it surgical neck okay clear proximal end is clear now apart from the proximal end there is one more thing that i want you to understand if you look at this structure very clearly you are clearly going to see a hinge like from from this from this point of view if you see this is a hinge like structures right in the back you can see this there, there is a hinge like this okay this is very common uh, this is a uh, tuberocyte so we are going to talk about this tuberocytes here greater tubercle are there and lesser tubercle are there so both these sides here you can see and then before talking about the hinge uh, if i uh, put it like this there are two uh, set of this tubercle structures that we can clearly see from this point from this point is very clear even let me change the color i'll take a red color here so greater this is greater this one is greater tubercle and this one is uh, lesser tubercle greater tubercle lesser tubercle okay this both structures are clearly visible here the greater greater tubercle uh, why it is lateral projection for the muscle attachment here and lesser tubercle is a place uh, for so this is another site again anterior projection to the muscle attachment lateral uh, muscle attachment anterior position to the muscle attachment both the tubercles are present apart from that the most important so list of the like if you talk about the shaft area then there is one thing that uh, we need to talk about uh, regarding the shaft here but in this shaft also we have the bony uh, structure the bony structure is very re uh, required uh, the mid shaft is also known as the body structure and this this is something uh, that i want to understand uh, want you to understand if you look at from this not not from this angle it's not well visualized from this angle but from this angle you can see this is the hinge right you see this is the hinge this sort of hinge structure that you can clearly see out there what is this hinge uh, that we see it is known as deltoid tuberosity yes deltoid tuberosity known as mid shaft deltoid muscle attachment site this is where the deltoid muscle of our body is attached you can see the light and shadow clearly depicts this particular hinge out there deltoid muscle attachment site very very important okay uh, so that is one bony part and there is also radial groove we also have radial groove in that uh, that is another important part radial groove is generally visible from the back side and in the radial groove what we can see is that the posterior of a radial uh, so this is a connecting portion of the radial uh, nerve actually so from the posterior uh, view we are going to see the groove 
here from the posterior side this is the groove radial groove this radial groove you can see this groove structure clearly visible the radial groove is the portion where uh, the radial nerve gets connected here at this particular uh, humerus structure so clear the bony landmarks uh, one is the deltoid tuberosity and another one is the radial groove are clear now let's move on to the distal end this is my favorite distal end because this is the portion where the humerus is attached to radius ulna okay and the distal end what we have we have trochlea and we have capitalum two things are out there trochlea and capitalum so trochlea and capitalum you can see radius and ulna both are being connected here so this is trochlea here this is trochlea and this is epitalum both of them trochlea is connected to ulna okay and uh, the epitalum connected to radius so this is radius structure you can see in between radius and ulna you can easily distinguish between based on this hinge that is present we'll talk about that later but trochlea and epitalum both are there uh, so trochlea and capitalum both are there trochlea articulates with ulna trochlea articulates with ulna and capitalum articulates with uh, the radius okay now what are the muscles that are attached i'll give you the table but there are various kind of muscles that are at attached from this part so obviously we have the the bicep muscles we have the tricep muscles all these muscles are present here particularly bicep and tricep muscles and they are being regulated uh, for the uh, the movement and contraction of the muscle and the arm movement overall what is the clinical significance three significance we'll talk about fractures this this place is very common to get fractured the humerus particularly the surgical uh, neck fractures quite common and second one is the dislocations uh, the dislocation of the shoulder can happen you can see the ball this is a kind of joint out there uh, between the, this this is the glenoid cavity of the scapula and this is where with the humerus connected to the glenoid cavity of the uh, scapula so here where we have dislocation of the shoulder that is very common and also radial nerve injury that nerve that is connected to this uh, back side here so radial nerve injury is also very common this uh, lack uh, that that caused the affect of movement due to the change in sensation so all these three clinical significances out there and what is the function of this uh, humerus what is the function of humerus the function of humerus is muscle attachment side for bicep tricep and also the shoulder movement supports the forearm so this is the forearm we know that we can take it down like this so this is the rotation around the shoulder this sort of movements are possible from this shoulder joint right so this this movement is possible uh, supports the forearm movement forearm and holds the forearm in structure facilitates the hand movement overall so this is the idea of humerus anatomy all right so i'll give you an idea about the anatomy a uh, different part of the humerus today and uh, we have talked about the structural aspect of the humerus but it's time to give you a little more idea about the type of muscles that are attached to the humerus about the arteries supply blood to humerus and also about the tendons and ligaments and everything associated to the uh, humerus so the muscles that are involved out there are biceps brachii uh, the location is anterior aspect of the humerus uh, humerus so anterior side function flexes the elbow joint and uh, supinates uh, the forearm part of our body next one is the tricep brachii tricep is another important muscle we know this is bicep muscle here and this is tricep muscle so tricep is present in the posterior aspect of the humerus so it's a posterior aspect it extends the elbow joint next one is deltoid uh, lateral aspect of the humerus so if this is the one this is the deltoid the lateral aspect this is the anterior aspect this is posterior aspect and this is lateral aspect it abducts the flexation of the shoulder joint okay so the abductions and flexation of the shoulder joints are possible brachialis uh, anterior aspect of the humerus there is another muscle called a brachialis as is the flexion of the elbow joint again and we have coracobrachialis medial aspect of the humerus is the part of the coracobrachialis you can see here this is coracobrachialis in this particular picture you can clearly see as is the flexion and abduction of the shoulder muscle muscle so shoulder muscle, muscle flexation is done by both deltoid brachialis and coraco brachialis next move on to the ligaments that are present there glenohumeral ligament is the ligament uh, that is present in the shoulder joint reinforce the capsule of the shoulder joint together where we have humerus bone attached attaching to the shoulder joint the next one is ulnar collateral ligament okay the, this ligament is medial aspect of the elbow stabilizes the medial side of the elbow joint so near the medial side of the elbow joint so ulnar collateral ligament or ucl is actually a, uh, a, a ligament that is present in the in elbow joint 
where glenohumeral ligaments is present in the shoulder joint. Okay. The last, last one is radial collateral ligament RCL, lateral aspect of the elbow again in the elbow joint stabilizes the lateral side of the elbow joint. So UCL and RCL both are the part of our elbow joint and glenohumeral ligament is a part of our shoulder joint. Okay. Next one is the tendons that are present. Tendons for bicep is there and this is the, the location if you talk about is antecubital fossa is the place, antecubital fossa is the place where the tendon biceps are present, it attaches the bicep muscle to the radius. So we have this, uh, so bicep muscle is connected to the radius with the help of tendon, okay. Tendon, by, tendon of the triceps is another one, okay, the location. The location is Ole Carnon process is the location attaches the tricep muscle to the ulna. So here we have radius and ulna both the structures together. The bicep muscle is connected to the radius. So bicep, bicep muscle is connected to the radius by the tendon of biceps and uh, the tricep muscle is connected to the ulna by tendon of triceps. Okay. Next one is the blood vessels, brachial artery. Location medial aspect of the arm, medial aspect of the arm is the brachial artery, supplies oxygenated blood to the arm here. Radial artery, lateral position is the for radial artery, supplies oxygenated blood to the forearm. So brachial artery supplied to the arm <coughs> and the radial artery supplied to the forearm. Ulnar artery, medial aspect of the arm in the middle supplies oxygenated blood to the forearm. So oxygenated blood supplied to the forearm but both the types of arteries, radial artery as well as ulnar artery. Well brachial artery, brachial artery delivers it to the medial aspect of the arm. So remember that always, medial aspect of the arm is where two arteries are there, brachial artery and ulnar artery but brachial artery delivers it to the arm overall and ulnar artery particularly to the forearm. The last one are the nerves, the type of nerves that are present in uh, the humerus. <clears throat> if you look at the structure of the humerus here and you can see there is a median nerve, ulnar nerve, radial nerve, okay, musculocutaneous nerve, all these nerves are present. So median nerve is one of the very important nerve here, medial aspect of the arm or forearm, this is the medial nerves ranging all together throughout the humerus. So the job here is <clears throat> innervates muscle of the anterior forearm. So if this is the forearm, then obviously we have anterior side and posterior side. So it innervates with the anterior forearm. Radial nerve, posterior aspect of the arm is the location. In And what is the job again? Innervates muscles to the posterior arm. So for the posterior side, we have a radial nerve. From the anterior side, we have median nerve connected to the muscle. Ulnar nerve, medial aspect of the arm innervates muscle to the anterior forearm. So generally, you know, median nerve and ulnar nerve have similar sort of function twin together. This is median nerve, this is ulnar nerve, you can see in the picture. The position is little different, but the job is similar. Auxiliary nerve. Axillary nerve, lateral aspect of the shoulder is a part of the axillary nerve. Here you can see, it, the location is totally different. The place where humerus is connected to the glenohumeral socket. So near that area, we have this axillary nerve. Lateral aspect of the shoulder, that is the part of axillary nerve, innervates the deltoid and teres minor muscles. Okay, deltoid muscle, the deltoid is here, the deltoid muscle and teres minor muscle, back side. So, both of them are regulated by this axillary nerve. So, these are overall idea about the different muscles, ligament, tendons, nerves and arteries attached to the humerus. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get more videos in future for free.